Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of strengthening your faith daily. Listen, when we're talking about building our faith, that's not something that we can just do randomly or like every once in a while. I mean, it's almost like brushing our teeth and taking a shower. It's something that we have to be continuously doing every single day because our faith is going to be tested. Our faith is going to be challenged. I mean, just living in this world, in a world that's constantly seeking to pull us away from God, it's more crucial than ever for us today to actively work on deepening our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many things in this world that we face every single day. I mean, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. We know that every single day as believers in Jesus Christ, we face challenges in temptations, in distractions that can weaken our faith if we are not intentional about staying close to the Lord. If this is the first time you have been here, my name is Michelle, and what you will find here is faith-based content that encourages you to grow your own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So today, we're going to be talking about strengthening our faith daily. So let's get into it. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, for we walk by faith not by sight. This means that we must trust God even when we cannot see or understand his plans for us. We rarely get to see the whole picture of what God has planned for us. Rarely does he show us the beginning and end of something that we're currently working on, something that we're pursuing, something that we are pressing in and pressing through, like with prayer. We don't always get to see every single step before it happens. And that's why we are required to walk by faith, not by sight. Because there are so many things that we are going to have to trust God with on this faith journey. So one way to strengthen our faith daily is through prayer. Listen, prayer is our direct line of communication with God. And it's through prayer that we can seek his guidance, that we can thank him for his blessings, and that we can ask for his strength to face the trials each day. Listen, we know that when Jesus taught us how to pray, he said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That's the Lord's prayer. And it says to give us our daily bread. That's because every single day we should be in prayer seeking the Lord for our daily needs. Listen, I think about our daily bread as manna from heaven. If you remember the Israelites were given by God manna from heaven, but they were only allowed to store up enough manna for one day. And if they were to store up manna for two days because they were they were fear of lack or that God wasn't going to provide the next day, then it would rot, right? They were only allowed to store up two days on the Sabbath. So they were only allowed to store up enough manna for those two days, but otherwise they were only allowed to store up manna for one day. And that's how it is with God. We must be praying and communicating with God every single day because our needs, our challenges, our temptations, they could change literally daily. So I just want you to get in your mind that 
in order to stay close to the father and to have like this open dialogue with him, we must be communicating with him every single day. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, we are reminded to rejoice always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, so many times I've heard that verse misquoted. You know, people say that we are to give thanks for all circumstances, for that is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That is not what that verse says. That verse says that we are to give thanks in all circumstances. Like, I'm not going to thank the Lord when I have a bad day or when I get into a fender bender car accident or like when I got diagnosed with MS. I'm not going to thank the Lord for those situations, but I need to be mindful in thanking the Lord through those situations, okay? Like I'm we can't get angry with God because of those situations and then continue to just like be mad at him and yell at him and curse him out and blame him for everything. We have to be thankful for his presence, for his love, for his grace, for his mercy through those situations. And that's what keeps our faith growing. So another way to strengthen our faith is through reading and meditating on God's word. Listen, the Bible is a living and powerful book that carries the words of God himself. The word is alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. That's what the word says. The word is alive and active. That's how it can be relevant today. You know, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has heard that the Bible isn't relevant today. Like, it doesn't talk about anything that we're presently or currently going through. And that is a lie. The Word is alive and active. And when we read and meditate on the Word, which is we like mull it over in our minds, that's what meditate means. We, we think about it. We memorize it. We quote it. We really meditate on what exactly it is saying and we allow that word to get down deep on the inside of us and we allow the holy spirit to make that word come alive and be active in our lives like we gotta live this thing out okay we can't just read the bible quote it and go about our day like we are required as god's children his chosen people to live this thing out the bible is alive and active and we must meditate on it and folks we must live this thing out in hebrews 4 12 we are told that the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints in marrow it judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart there it is hebrews 4 12. i'm thankful that the lord had brought that verse to remembrance that's what i was talking about that's the verse that i was quoting and look i actually forgot that i had wrote it down as a reference but really the word of god is alive and active and church it is relevant for today it is relevant for anything that you are going through any challenge you are facing any temptation you are being tempted with any lie that the enemy is trying to convince you of the word of god is relevant for those situations amen so by immersing ourselves in scripture daily, like we can find guidance in wisdom, in encouragement to navigate the challenges in life, okay? Without God's word, we kind of stumble and we can get tossed from here to there. We can find information in this world that promises to help us out when we face these challenges or temptations or distractions. 
But if you've been a Christian for any length of time, then you know that the word of God is always, always the best and most relevant wisdom for the situation that you are facing, okay? As believers, let us not forget the importance of also fellowshipping with other believers in our pursuit of strengthening our faith. Listen, we cannot live this Christian life alone. I once heard it said that in a lone Christian is a powerless Christian. Listen, when the enemy gets us alone, he attacks us with all kinds of lies and distractions and temptations to take us off our path with the Lord. We must be surrounding ourselves with other believers so that they can strengthen us when we fall on hard times, so that they can strengthen us and encourage us when we want to give up. Sometimes in this Christian life, we want to stop. We want to give up because sometimes it does get very intense. But thank the Lord that he has given us everything we need for life and godliness. We have his word. We have prayer. We have other believers. And it is such a good, good thing. And we need all of it on this Christian walk, on this faith journey. Because listen, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, we are urged to consider how we may spur one another on toward love in good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another in all the more as we see the day approaching. Okay, I don't talk much about it, but I can obviously see the day approaching. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus is coming back within the next two weeks, two days, two months. Like, I don't know. The Bible says that none of us know the exact time that the Lord is coming back. Yes, we're living in trying difficult, evil times right now. But I like to say this is nothing new for the Lord. Listen, Ecclesiastes says that there is nothing new under the sun. So yes, we're living in this generation. And I understand that there are lots of things that are happening right now that are not typical, that are not good but we have to understand that we live in enemy territory this is where satan in his demons live okay i mean that's just the facts that's the truth and we christians are simply passing through here like we're going home to heaven our final destination is in heaven and yes, we are going to go through turbulation in trying times here on earth. I mean, John 16.33 tells us that we are going to face difficult times. But you know what? The verse also says that we are to take heart because Jesus overcame the world. All right? So I know that things are difficult right now. I, I get it. I'm living through these difficult situations too. But I don't believe that our answer is one person it's not a person the answer is the lord jesus christ and so we have to put our faith put our eyes put our hope in him for our future yes he uses people but the number one person that we need to focus on right now is jesus christ okay because when we do that he will build us up. The Holy Spirit is alive and active in us as well. And he will cause us to do the things that God has us to do right now. Like, yes, we live in this generation. So there is something God has for us to do. What is it? I'm not entirely sure what every single person's role is. But I am confident in this. If we put our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and 
allow his word to just come alive on the inside of us and is activated by the Holy Spirit and we walk this thing out, we are going to be doing the will of God right here and right now, okay? So lastly, I just want to say, let us not underestimate the power of worship in strengthening our faith daily. Listen, when we come before God with hearts full of praise and adoration, we acknowledge his sovereignty and we declare our trust in his goodness. As it says in Psalm 63, 3 through 4, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Listen, friends, worship is a powerful way to draw close to God and strengthen our faith in him. Worship, worship, it can be to worship music or it can just be in silence on your knees, praying, worshiping, crying out to the Lord, enjoying his presence. Friend, I enjoy worshiping the Lord. My form of worship, my number one form of worship that I like to participate in is Sunday morning worship with my church. We have a couple um, of worship leaders and they're phenomenal. Their music is wonderful and it just is so full of worship and adoration for the Lord that it just builds me up. And then throughout the day, I listen, I mean, throughout the week, I listen to K-Love, Air One, and another uh, radio station that I get here. And I just literally worship the Lord every single day on my way to and from work and anytime in between when I need it. Worshiping the Lord just reminds us that He is worthy of all praise and adoration regardless of what we are going through. Listen, friends, let's commit ourselves to investing in our spiritual growth every single day so that we can walk boldly in faith and fulfill the calling that God has placed on our lives. All right? We are called to go boldly before the throne of grace. And I just want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to seek the Lord every single day because he will help you with every challenge, every temptation, and every distraction that you are facing right now. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for your word. We thank you that you have given us everything we need for life and godliness. So Lord, help us to go to you every single day in prayer and in worship, Lord, so that we can just draw closer to you. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that word encouraged you today. And um, until next time, take care and God bless. I'll see you next Wednesday.